Yesterday, you said investors in semis are growing increasingly worried about a macro correction. That basically means a recession coming that will chill demand. Is that the big threat to these big stocks? I mean, it is a threat, and it's a big one, yeah. Um, I would say investors have been getting increasingly worried, and we've seen this all year. The sector has broadly underperformed. It peaked almost at the very beginning, like January 1st of the year, and it's been underperforming all year, even as earnings estimates until very recently were still climbing because investors were, were getting more and more concerned about the actual achievability of those estimates. We've now actually started to see some of the, some of the, the estimates start to roll over, particularly, as you mentioned, in some of these more consumer-focused areas, PCs, smartphones, graphic cards, GPUs, TVs, that kind of thing. Um, and investors are worried that as the macro gets worse and there's still COVID lockdowns and now we have issues in China and the Ukraine war and everything else, um, that these sort of things will start to spread into other areas. You know, we're starting to see some incremental signs. Yeah, go ahead. For, no, forgive me. I, I Finish your thought, please, Stacey. I beg your then, pardon. We're starting to see some incremental signs. So data center, for example. Um, enterprise spending within data center is starting to get, we're starting to see a little bit. Like in, Intel's data center business missed pretty terribly on enterprise. Um, AMD, NVIDIA kind of mentioned it. Mostly the companies are talking about supply chain issues at this point. Um the, the server customers can't get all the parts they need, so they're having trouble building um, the, the servers. But it, it's sort of one start. Auto and industrial are holding in reasonably well, although companies like Analog Devices has started to change tone a little bit, talking a little bit about order cancellations. Personally, I've been worried more about stockpiling and double ordering in those kinds of markets because lead times have been so long because it's been so hard to get parts. Shortages have been so, so much that cus companies in, in those kinds of scenarios mm -hmm. tend to order more than they need. And... I personally think that there's a lot of evidence in markets like auto and industrial that have been very strong that some of the demand we've seen is maybe not um, all actually going into end products. It may be stockpiling as well. So I'm nervous about that. That it, tends to bite you on the other side of it. You know, well. I think why this segment is so important is that so many investors who are watching today probably either are in or have been in or have thought about getting into some of the very stocks that we're talking about here. The AMDs, the NVIDIA, yeah. a, a market darling if ever there was one a couple of years ago. Qualcomm, yeah. AMAT. Uh, Intel has been sort of dead money for a long time. We know the story there. What advice do you have for investors with respect to these stocks? What do I do if I own them? I've ridden them up. I've ridden them down. Yeah. What do I do? You, you bet. So if, if you're in semis and you want to be in semis and you're cyclically nervous, I actually like Broadcom. Um, so Broadcom doesn't have a lot of consumer exposure. They have, the only consumer exposure they have is Apple. Apple's actually holding up okay. Most of what they have is infrastructure on the semi side, which is good. Mm -hmm. um, they have not been shipping everything their customers have been ordering. They've been deliberately under shipping because they're aware of what customer behavior tends to be like around these sorts of cycles. Their backlog is like $31 billion. It's more than a year's worth of semi-revenue, semi, semi so they've got a lot of runway there. They've got a big software business, sticky, mission-critical, enterprise-focused software that is much more stable and, and high margin. They're trying mm -hmm. to buy VMware right now, which will bring the software semi-mix to 50%. Um, and Broadcom's ticker is what, AVGO? It's AVGO, that's right. It used to be a, a, a Vago. Highest margins, highest free cash flow in the industry. It's one of the cheapest things in the space. So that's mm -hmm. something that I like. Um, other options, there are some of these more secular stories that are maybe exposed to some of these other energies, but they've been punished, maybe, maybe a little too much. In my coverage, I'd throw in companies like AMD and, and, and Qualcomm in, into, that, uh, into that category. AMD is exposed to some of these markets, PCs, enterprise servers, GPUs mm -hmm. that have been weak, but they've been powering through like a champ because their, their product execution has been phenomenal and they're taking tons of share. And Qualcomm, look, anything touching a smartphone has been death. They make chips for that, but their mix within smartphones is much better. It's much more high-end. It's preserving them. And I think the setup for Qualcomm next year looks really, really good. Um, they get more Samsung volume. Smartphone compares will look really easy next okay. year, and, and people are worried that Apple's going to go away. It may not go away, and it's 10 times earnings. Like, I don't think expectations are high at all yeah. for that one. Wonderful insights, encyclopedic knowledge. Stacey Raskin of Bernstein, thanks. <laughs> we'll see you every day yeah. next week, man. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend. Let me know. <laughs> you got it.